Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your May 16th to the 31st, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. Now, as always, these readings are coming from a place of love, light, and positivity to build you up instead of bringing you down and also to connect you with the higher messages from your angels and your spirit guides so that you really walk in divine grace. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be starting with your spirit guide animal cards. These are also your totem animals for this time. So if you see these animals in the wild, Taurus, or you see an image of these animals, this is really your angels and your spirit guides tapping you on the shoulder saying, remember this message. So angel and spirit guide message for Taurus, May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Angel and spirit guide message for Taurus, May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have the wolf spirit, turn knowledge into wisdom, which is really quite gorgeous. And then we have the starfish spirit, which says, open to infinite possibilities. So as your knowledge turns to wisdom, you become open to the infinite possibilities that are going to be opening to you. You become very receptive to them. Now we're going to be using your chakra cards, and these are going to give you your chakras that need to be focused on, but also the energy that's going to be really strong in which chakras. So let's see here. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Taurus. May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Taurus. May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have love. Oh, that's beautiful. And we have personal power. So you're going to find that a lot of your personal power right now, Taurus, comes from your heart, comes from what you love, comes from those that you love. And that just makes perfect sense for you because even though people sit there and might think, oh, wow, Taurus, you're like super tough. You know, you know your mind. You're very kind of, you know, focused. You are a big softy and you are absolutely connected with your heart in such an exquisite way. So that is beautiful. Actually, it just warms. It makes me smile and is warming my heart to see this. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Taurus, May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Taurus, May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Taurus, May 16th to the 31st, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. At the heart of everything, we have the Hanged Man, crowned by the Seven of Wands, the Six of Cups, the Queen of Cups, a water sign energy, a Pisces, a Scorpio, a Cancer, Page of Swords, an air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Four of Cups, Two of Cups, Minor Arcana Lovers card right here, Temperance, which is a Sagittarius energy, a time frame November 22nd to December 21st. Ace of Swords, you're absolutely taking this knowledge, and it comes from the heart. And then the Page of Pentacles, which is you. You are represented by the Pentacles in the Minor Arcana. You are represented by the Hierophant in the Major Arcana. So this is really a time where you're seeing things differently than you're going to feel like everybody else around you. It can be that you're seeing things very much in line with the way other people are seeing them, but there's something about th what's going on that everybody isn't going to want to talk about. So here, just know that you might feel like an outsider looking in, or you might feel like your ideas are going to be wild and crazy and people might laugh or you know scoff at you or something like that. You're going to see that 
it's not that out there and you don't want to change the way that you're seeing things because this is actually divinely gifted to you. This is guided to you by your angels, your spirit guides that are really helping you work out a certain problem that you have, work out something that is like, it has been holding you back, but it has been like a thorn in your paw where you're sitting there and thinking, oh, you know, can I move forward this way? Am I not going to? And I'm just thinking of that lion with the, there's an old fairy tale about a lion with a thorn in his paw, and it was this little tiny mouse that takes out and saves the lion's life by taking out the, the thorn. And it's going to be something like that. It's going to be something that is small, but that really does have this powerful hold over you that you're going to find gets removed during this time, and you're like, oh, okay. It's like, oh, wow. Everything's so much brighter, so much better. Yeah. So as you turn wisdom, as you turn knowledge into wisdom, it's because you are really looking at what you are learning, what you know, what you are understanding, and you're finding that knowledge is something you accumulate, right? You go to school to obtain knowledge. Wisdom has gotten through the years. So you're going to see that what you have learned, what you have been learning through life becomes a wisdom and almost a creed for which you live by. And as you embrace this knowledge turning into wisdom, you see that you're opening to infinite possibilities. You're not going to be stuck. And that's one of the things, Taurus, that during this time you cannot abide. You cannot abide the feeling of being stuck, of being over, it's like overwhelmed, but it's also underwhelmed. So it can be that you're overly stressed, but you feel as if everything that you're doing doesn't have the purpose that you would really love it to have. So here, that's why you have such a strong connection during this time to your heart chakra. Really listening to your heart, listening to your heart self, guiding yourself forward is going to be paramount to you during this time because you're needing, you're needing to connect with the emotional you. And why is that important? Because I believe that all of us human be beings are emotional creatures. And as emotional creatures, we need to talk to our hearts. We need to listen to our emotions. And as we listen and as we gain this understanding, you will find that you move forward. You will find that a peace comes over you. You will find that wisdom walks with you. And as you do this, and as you really start to fall in love with your heart chakra and your heart self, you move forward in personal power. And you move forward knowing that your gut is guiding you. Your solar plexus, your gut, is really calling to you. And you're going to find that you gain a power that is astounding, that is beautiful, and that you are severely committed to. And as you do so, again, there's the way that you're seeing things, which is different. It is different than everybody else. So it's not going to be as different as you think it is. But you have this different way of looking at things. You have this beauty that is around you that, you know, spirit, your angels, everybody is saying, don't lose it. Don't become like everybody else because it's easier. It's kind of like stand out and be proud. So here it is standing out and is being proud of the way that you see things. And yeah, it might not fall into alignment with everybody else, but you know what? They have their lives and you have yours. And so here with the hanged man, it's having the courage to look at life and to say, yes, I see it differently, but I see it beautifully because you are seeing it differently also because of the Ace of Swords, God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, is handing you this gift of knowledge, of understanding, of clear thought, and it can make you feel different than everybody else. But that difference is actually going to be one of your greatest strengths during this time. You're crowned with the Seven of Wands and the Temperance card. Now the Temperance card calls to balance it also calls to a Sagittarian energy. Again, the time frame, November 22nd to December 21st. The Seven of Wands. Oh, I like this one. Seven plus seven is 14. So the Seven of Wands is needing to stand your ground, all right? But it's also knowing when to fight and when not to. So with the Seven of Wands, it's kind of like don't roll over and play dead because that's not going to get you anywhere. But also don't engage with every person who who's kind of like itching for a fight themselves, you know, know what you know, embrace what you know, walk forward in your wisdom. And then when you need to stand your ground and defend your truth, but there are going to be some people during this time, Taurus, they will never understand where you're coming from. 
they have no desire to understand where you're coming from. And so it's like, okay, that's it. That's their choice. And no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you will not change their mind. You're finding your balance. You are calling to your balance. You're also calling to your creative self. And you're going to need to be in balance with your creative heartfelt understanding. So with your heart that is creating your universe, with your emotional truth, with your emotional self, you're going to find that you're balancing, kind of you're balancing your mindfulness with your spirituality. You're balancing this world with your, with the world of your heart. And you're going to find that yes, it's tricky. And yes, at times you'll be more sensitive about things than you thought you would be, but it's a very powerful time for you and you know it, you can feel it. And so as you're moving forward with this knowledge, with this feeling of truth and understanding, you have the page of swords at your root. The page of swords is an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, an Aquarius. And this is a sense here of being a student of your mind, being a student of what you desire. And you're going to find that your mind and your heart are learning how to work together during this time. Because so often we think that they're separate. You know, our thoughts, our logical self, that's one person. And then our hearts, our emotional self, that's another person. So you can see us made up of two people. You can see that there are two forces that guide us. But really, the way I look at it is that if you boil it down, we are our emotional self. Our emotions guide our thoughts. We are emotionally inclined to look at things one way or the other. And so here, you are going to find that your heart is calling to, is calling to your mind. And you are being a student of how to have these work together to move you forward. Because you're looking at your future. You're looking at the gifts that divinity are giving you. And you're going to see that you become a student to live in the clear thought of your truth and the clear purpose of, of your truth. So it's kind of like saying to yourself, I'm going to speak my truth. And I'm going to make my truth the cornerstone of my existence. Now, it can be really hard to speak the truth all the time. And it's not saying, it's not being nasty about things. Like I'm just thinking of, you know, those TV shows where they show you people who can't lie, not can't lie, but who don't lie and how somebody winds up getting murdered because they're just so mean and so just like, why I'm telling you the truth. I'm not talking about that. It's like, and I'm not saying that you'd get murdered. I'm just, I was thinking of a Bones episode. Um, but here with the, the Page of Swords and the the Page of Pentacles coming together with the Queen of Cups. It's like you see here and you're crowned by the blessings that your angels give you with the Ace of Swords, with the clarity of not of mind, the clarity of purpose, the clarity of clear thought. You're like, I am not going to lie about, about me. And I'm going to move forward embracing the truth of me and amplifying it and saying, this is what I live for. This is who I am. And as you are the student of your mind, you see that you are also the student of your prosperity. And these are going to be two things that are very important to you during this time. The studying, the understanding, the cutting through the doubts and the fears, the claiming your space, the speaking your truth, and the, the flexibility of mind is also going to be very important. It roots you, it guards you, it guides you. And as it does, you can be very kind of set in seeing things a very certain way. And with the Four of Cups, you're going to see here that divinity is handing you this gift, actually anointing you with this blessing, with a benediction of, of power, of heart's truth, of clearing away what is, what is holding you back, okay? Making you aware of idiosyncrasies or patterns within your behavior that are keeping you from moving forward the way that you want to. And as this comes over you, you're not aware of this cup here. You're looking at these three cups and it's like, okay, she's a little like annoyed at them, hands on her hips, like what's going on? Well, now you are most definitely taking this cup. And now you are a queen, preparing the next generations for understanding. It doesn't have to be your children if you don't have children. It is, you know, the next generations. It's having such an emotional impact on the world that it lasts. And you might say, how would it last? If one person remembers your kindness for years to come, it lasts. And now I feel is the most beautiful time to make the world kinder, to make the world better. And that's what I have you here 
embracing what I'm seeing you from spirit, from your angels, embracing. And it's like, don't worry, I know this. And I'm moving towards this, graced by this. And as you are, you cut through the doubts and fears. You claim your knowledge and your understanding. You become a student of it, but you become a student of it for your whole life. It's like always adding, always building, always gaining. And as you do so, you fall in love. You fall in love with your life. You fall in love with yourself. You embrace love. Now, it doesn't mean every moment of every day. For the last half of May, you're just like walking on cloud nine. Though, if you are, that's awesome. But it does mean you find moments of love, moments of beauty, moments where you just are quiet and you hear the birds singing. You see the sun setting. You, you know, hear a baby laugh. You know, little things. You take a walk with your dog. You know, little things. And it's like, the world is sweet. You have a fantastic, you know, ice cream sundae or something like that, you know, and it's like, the world is sweet. And you are embracing that sweetness. And as you do so, you have the Six of Cups. You're looking at how you want the world to be, but also how you remember the world being when you were small. And with the Six of Cups, it's like not living in the past, moving forward in the present, and being aware of scars that we, we carry from childhood. And as you move forward, you sit there and you say, I love who I am, and I love who I was. And as you embrace that loving understanding, as you embrace that power and that truth, you balance yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you balance yourself, you cut through, actually your angels, your spirit guides, cut through the doubts, the fears, the apprehensions that have held you back. And you are anointed with clarity, with love, with this clear, this clear, clear-sighted understanding of the heart. And your subconscious message for this whole entire time is the Ace of Wands. Now, this is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of passion, of intuition, okay, of looking at what it is that you want to plant. The wands for me are our jobs, they're our vocations, they're what we're called for, they're what we love to do, you know, and those could all be very different things, you know, and you're going to sit here and you're going to see your passionate self, you're going to see your fiery self. And subconsciously, you know that it's calling you. And what's interesting is that you don't take it quite yet, this call, this gift, except to defend. So you're going to want to not use this passion that calls to your very subconscious as, as a fight or flight kind of thing. You want to use it to ignite your passion, to move you forward in beauty, and to really help you understand and be guided towards success. Because your angels want you to be guided towards success and are balancing you to embrace those opportunities. Now, as you are moving forward, your spirit animal cards are the parrot spirit. Watch your words. Watch your words because you have this clarity and you have this quickness with words, with the ace of swords and the page of swords. But you might, because the page of swords is the student is kind of the child card. So there can be a quickness to words. Like you know how kids speak without thinking and stuff like that. So there's going to be the sense of you're going to be, and you're going to kind of hit the nail on the head, but it's going to be what people don't want to hear. So just be mindful of this, that you're going to have this influx of words, this influx of, you know, just grasp on the truth and on what you say. So here, just be mindful of, of speaking without thinking. Yeah, so watch your words and you'll see yourself fly. And your subconscious chakra message is abundance, your root chakra. It moves you towards abundance. You are being moved towards abundance. You are being rooted in your success and you are going to find yourself guided towards greatness. All right, Taurus, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. 
Stay safe, and I love you all. Bye.